Yes! He said it! He said it! Yo, these broads in secret service. Let's go, DEI secret service. They're all gay. They're all women. They're putting lesbian women in secret service. It's f***ed up. I'm saying it. Here is Benny Boy. Incidents in modern American history, one of the darkest moments of my lifetime when President Donald Trump was the victim. You think this was one of the darkest moments in American history? 9-11. Like, what are you talking about? There are literally more tragic shootings of political... There are literally more tragic shootings of American political figures in Ben Shapiro's lifetime. This is before we even... It's not even in the top 10. It's not even on... Like, Donald Trump... Donald Trump being grazed with a bullet on his ear does not even reach the top 10 worst political moments in the last 10 years of American history, okay? There are mass shootings and natural disasters that have taken place in the last decade that are infinitely worse than what just took place yesterday. You cannot try and turn this into 9-11, no matter how hard. I'm not even talking about MLK, okay? Victim of an assassination attempt, and only thanks to the absolute grace of God, is Donald Trump still alive? I found about this on Shabbat. It was Shabbat over where I am in Los Angeles. I was here to do Bill Maher's show, and my security came and told me what was happening. Obviously, I was just as shocked and appalled as everyone else. And this is indeed the end result of a temperature. Am I to believe that, like, Benny doesn't have a Shabbos goy. Like, I don't understand. Like, he's describing that his Christian security get, came and told him anyway. Okay. Like, why you got to bring that up? In the United States, that is absolutely appalling. This is an increase in rhetorical temperature pushed by the radical left, unfortunately, by the media, by the president of the United States that has raised the temperature radically. Only the shooter is responsible for the shooting. But if you increase the temperature, over and over and over again by saying the former president of the United States, current front runner in. Yeah, you're right. People should not directly call out the former president for saying Hitlerian shit. Thank you, Ben. We should just stop. Also, Ben Shapiro has personally inspired literal acts of terror, not just in the United States of America, but in Canada, dude. The, the, uh, what was it? Was it in Quebec? The dude who like, killed a bunch of Muslims like he like he straight up said I got radicalized by Ben Shapiro so it is wild wild uh, now not Montreal Quebec yeah potential race major party nominee is in fact Hitler it is not particularly surprising it is shocking but it is not particularly surprising when someone goes and takes that seriously we'll have more to say about who the shooter was in just one moment first for those who have not had all the details revealed to them as of yet here was the timeline yesterday. So the shooting broke out, according to USA Today, just minutes before 6.15 p.m. in the city of Butler, which is about 35 miles north of Pittsburgh. President Trump, who has been doing rallies around the country over the past couple of weeks, was doing one in Pennsylvania, which of course is a battleground state. He took the stage at 6.03 p.m. Eastern time. At about 6.11 p.m., he was speaking. Yep, here it is. Matthew Hassan is on it. I didn't cite Moss Shooter, conservative pundit Ben Shapiro, and says the evil piece of human crap happened to be somebody who had seen some of my tweets. Ben Shapiro said of Quebec mosque shooter Alexander Bizonet. Like, how many, how many right-wing terrorists, mass shooters, directly name right-wing political pundits in their manifestos, dude? How many? It's so funny because these guys who spend... These guys who spend every day being like stochastic terror isn't real, stochastic terror isn't real, are now turning around and being like stochastic terrorism is real. And the only time it happens is when Democrats say Trump is Mango Mussolini. <laughs> stochastic terrorism isn't real when right wing freaks professionally talk about how migrants and non white people need to be murdered on a daily basis. And then one of their fans with a insane attitude and uh, immediate access to guns takes action writes a manifesto directly drops references to these guys in the manifesto references their ideology in the manifesto 
basically giving like a perfect narrative that it's like, I watched these guys, I learned from them, and now I'm acting out on their desires. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's fake. That's fake. That's fake. That's not how, how could, how could they have been, um, they're probably lying. It's probably a psyop. But yeah, dude, Joe Biden saying ah, blah, 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 Medicare was the reason why this dude went and wanted to kill Donald Trump. Not because he was president for the past four years, not because of any number of insane shit that he's personally said, not because of ease of access to weapons, not because he might have been a uh, weirdo right winger who might have been even more far right than Donald Trump, as it has happened with the synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh. The guy who shot up the synagogue in Pittsburgh literally was a Trump supporter who th who became even more far right he was like yeah i was a trump supporter but like you know i realized that it's the jews that are responsible for immigration and trump wasn't doing anything about it so i had to take matters into my own hands this is 100 percent real this is literally what the pittsburgh synagogue shooter straight up said okay he, he was a registered voter for trump he was a big trump supporter big fan of donald trump and he was like, I hear what he's saying about the great replacement narratives. I hear what he's saying about immigrants coming over in these caravans. Okay. You can't boil a whole political party down to a few people that goes both ways. Yes, you're absolutely correct about this. But I can look at an ideology. And right-wing ideology is almost always violent. Okay. Reactionary ideology puts the crosshairs on marginalized people as a part of its own like political messaging. They can try and reframe it in, in a context that suits civility purposes, right? You can talk about how, yes, black people must be shot by the police in a disproportionate rate because black people are violent. They have a violent culture. Some people will say black people are inherently violent because they're, you know, uh, racially inferior. Other people will say, oh, I would never say black people are racially inferior. I'm just saying they're culturally inferior. And that's why they're too violent. And that's why the police has to kill them disproportionately. But ultimately, both of those arguments are still immediately reactionary and absolutely violent, whether you say it civilly or not. Do you get it? Stop saying clip it whenever I'm talking about right wing framing on issues. Okay, don't be stupid. And all of a sudden, audible pops could be heard. Here is the footage of President Trump speaking. The footage is shocking. So if you haven't seen it, just be warned. It is footage of an assassination attempt. It's going to be some of the most iconic footage in American history. This whole incident is an astonishing incident. The hand of God, there's no way, honestly, I don't have another way to put this. The hand of God is protecting President Trump here. Because Dude, I love that. I love when they say that. Yeah. Yeah. God bent the bullet directly in the direction of this Trump supporter. That's so funny. Yeah. God bent the bullet to the brain of his peasant supporter and not the, the God King, the son of God himself. Uh, hello? Oh my God. Austin is, Austin ordered food to the house and he i'm literally watching him on the camera the guy is like not bringing the food inside austin texts me hey don't be alarmed i ordered food to the house i'm watching him on the camera get out of the uber and try to intercept the food while i'm trying to tell the food guy to bring it in and he's not bringing it in anyway let's continue because there is no way that he should survive what just happened here the shooter was extremely close to president trump we'll talk about the secret service failures in just one moment but this the shooter was extremely close. He was on a very nearby building to President Trump. Food? He was using apparently an AR-15, which is in fact a rifle. So he had a he had a, a rifle that is certainly well within range of killing the president. And he hits President Trump in the ear in this video. President Trump, if you play this video in slow motion, you will see he shifts. I don't get it. Guns don't kill people. Why is he even bringing up the AR-15 stuff? Like what's going on? the positioning of his head literally milliseconds before the bullet whizzes past his head and hits his ear. And it is that shift in head motion that saves his life. And in fact, we don't know that, that there were three shots at least fired. We know that because one person in the crowd was killed on the spot, apparently had his head blown away. I don't mean to be graphic, but it's an assassination attempt. That's what this is. Two other people in the crowd were severely wounded. Here is the footage from yesterday afternoon, Butler, Pennsylvania. Dude, I was just, I was just given information that Alexa is escaping the country. That's right.
He's leaving the country far before he. He's I like, gotta, I'm I gotta done. leave before the civil war starts. I'm done. He said he's done with my bullshit. He's like, oh, I made, I made him work out too much. What did I miss? What did they, did they tell us the Chinese guy's name? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Trump shooter ID. I didn't say anything wrong on my title. Um, Albania's strongest soldier is leaving. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, up. sorry guys. Yeah, no, we're watching Ben Shapiro uh, cry about how. Democrat words are violence. Oh my Democratic God. rhetoric is responsible ultimately for Donald Trump almost being killed. Ah. And, and, uh, and also that, uh, that the grace of God bent the bullet away from Donald Trump and, and into, into the, into into the brain, fans. into the brains of one of his <laughs> most loyal fans. God hated that guy. Yeah. You know, president Trump said, let me get my shoes. I wonder if he's going to link it to the, um, campus protests. Surely, that's, oh, the, dude, that's maybe. the main angle. Oh, you know who is doing that? Bernie, uh, not Bernie Sanders. The crowd is, um, is that how you say I did? <laughs> okay, I said I did. You guys suck. Oh my God, everyone in the chat is going crazy over how to spell I did. I'm going to lose my mind. Um, who cares? 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 Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Okay. Well, I gotta quickly finish this booking and I'll come right back. Oh wow, okay. Oh, he's leaving. He's leaving already. That's crazy. Okay, I don't really care about Ben Shapiro reenacting these moments. Okay. What you hear in that video is a few shots. You hear at least three shots from the shooter. Then you hear a couple of shots that are probably in response from the Secret Service snipers killing the shooter. And then a final shot, which very likely is Secret Service seeing movement of the shooter and shooting him once more. Now, that's what that sort of sequence of shots probably is. The images are astonishing. I mean, just incredible images. This is a picture from the New York Times. You can actually see the pathway in the air of the bullet whizzing past President Trump as he speaks. This is before he realizes he's been hit because obviously the bullet is traveling extremely fast. And so he would have heard the whiz past his ear, which as we'll see is what he said in his statement. The most iconic photo though, is going out. Is okay, okay, okay. We get it. We get it. All right, get to the good his stuff. candidacy. And there's one other thing here. I mentioned it right at the top. The attempted assassination is one of the most predictable things to happen in American public life in my lifetime. It is simultaneously one of the most shocking and one of the most predictable. Shocking, but not surprising. Why? Because the temperature has been turned up so high for so long. His political opponents have defined him as literally Hitler. And when you keep saying your political opposition is literally Hitler, who's going to... Ben Shapiro has called college campus protesters literally Hitler. Like queer English majors in Colombia. Okay? Like you cannot be doing this right now. Like that is... Oh God. This is laughable shit. Okay? Donald Trump's politics are straight up Hitlerian. They are. When a dude says... Immigrants are poisoning the blood of America, of this wonderful nation. That's Hitler. Just because you, Ben, agree with him doesn't change that reality. What the f To take America into a new dark age, when you say that over and over and over again, you are turning up the temperature. You're turning it up. It's how you get congressional baseball shootings. And it's how you get attempted assassination attempts on Justice Brett Kavanaugh. And it's how you get what happened yesterday in Butler, Pennsylvania. Again, what is this? I care about the current situation in America in also 31. He's been saying it also 31, 31. Okay, this guy is Turkish and really horny. That's why he keeps spamming 31. The think. only person who is responsible for the actual attempted shooting is the shooter. With that said. The reason why he's trying to say that, by the way, is because, again, every, this, is the, this is the funniest says you moment for Ben Shapiro. And that's precisely the reason why. That's precisely the reason why he has to be like, oh, it's only the shooter that's responsible. Nobody else. Because so many other shooters have quite literally put Ben Shapiro in his manifestos, named him as an influence. You know what I mean? In the words of Chapel Roan, he is, <laughs> he is the right-wing pundit's favorite pundit, okay? As far as right-wing terrorist goes, he's the right-wing terrorist's favorite right-wing terrorist. So that's the reason why he has to be like, ah, this is just a shooter alone. But also the, the Democrats are really, really, really beefing up the re uh, the rhetoric, which is so funny. The, the Democrats are raising the temperature, dude, and not Republicans. Donald Trump's campaign policy revolves. One of his campaign uh, promises is the deportation, the mass deportation of 20 million people. 
Okay? 20 million people. That's insane. You suck. When you keep turning up the temperature, when you keep saying that America is going to be literally destroyed, this will be the last election, Donald Trump is the worst person who has ever lived and he must be stopped. Someone. Donald Trump has also personally said, if I'm not elected, America will be destroyed. Donald Trump said America has been destroyed. The, Donald Trump has said everything that Joe Biden has said times a million. If there's one person that has said that the most, it's Donald Trump. It's normal things to say, by the way, okay? You're just campaigning. That's it. Like, oh, if I'm not elected, America will be destroyed. Yeah, of course, that's what you're trying, you're trying to win. That's what people say when they're trying to win. And what do you say? Projection? I mean, yeah, Ben is doing projection here. But Donald Trump is also significantly more violent in his rhetoric than, like, even other Republicans are. He's also significantly more violent in his policies than Republicans of the past. He's just a very violent guy is going to take that seriously and think to themselves, shouldn't I do something to stop Hitler? Shouldn't I? So is there a measure of responsibility borne by people who say things like that over and over and over repeatedly, never stopping, consistently, every day for years on end? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do we know about the shooter at this time? So apparently, I don't mention the names of shooters, but this is a presidential assassin. So I'm going to make an exception here. The FBI has identified 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, as the, as the suspect in the attempt at assassination. They didn't have any ID on him. They had to use biometric markers in order to figure out who he was. They went to his home last night, and they, they checked it out. They raided it. They brought stuff out. According to state voter records, he was a registered Republican, but this would, have been the first, this would have been the first election in which he could have voted because he was only 20 years old. However, when he was 17... Let me... Oh, he's going to talk about the... I wonder if he'll bring up that he's a registered Republican. He's going to be like, in 2017, when he, he made a $15 donation to Act Blue, which is a political action committee that raises money for left-leaning and Democratic politicians, according to a 2021 Federal Election Commission filing. That donation was earmarked for the Progressive Turnout Project, a national group that rallies Democrats to vote. Crooks' father, who is 53, told CNN he was still trying to figure out what happened and would wait until he spoke to law enforcement before speaking about his son. The only thing we know about him is that he graduated high school. Wait leaning and Democratic politicians, according to a 2021 Federal Election Commission filing. That donation was earmarked for the Progressive Turnout Project, a national group that rallies Democrats to vote. Crooks' father, who is 53, told CNN he was still trying to figure out what happened and would wait until he spoke to law enforcement before. Wait, why did he move on? To before speaking about his son. Home last night and they were Republicans. But this would have been the first, this would have been the first election in which he could. He barely brings it up. He just says, ah, he's a registered Republican, but he he's never voted. This would have been the first time he would have voted. Also, he made a donation for $15. 53 told CNN he was still trying to figure out what happened and would wait until he spoke to law enforcement before speaking about his son. The only thing we- He also brings it up before he brings up the donation. When the timeline is when he's 17, he makes a $15 donation during the inauguration and then he registers as a Republican. So, you know. We know about him as the graduated high school in 2022 and received a $500 star award from the National Math and Science Initiative. No, no, the $15 donation is him. It's misinformation. It's not people saying it's like an older guy, a different guy by the same name is wrong. They're wrong. It is him. Video from the ceremony posted online shows crooks with glasses and a black graduation gown posing with a school official, apparently. Again, law enforcement vehicles have been stationed outside the residence listed at the address on Crooks' voter registration record. They were on the scene. A bomb squad was at the residence as well. Unclear at this point what more we know. We'll bring it to you as it emerges, obviously. In terms of what actually happened, there are obviously many, many witnesses. So we're going to break this into two parts. There are the witnesses to the actual shooting and the aftermath. And then there are the witnesses who saw the shooter up on the roof. And Secret Service obviously reacted late on this. So here is Pennsylvania State House candidate Rico Elmore who was present and explains what he saw as this went down. I yelled, everyone to get down. Everybody was getting down. Everybody was yelling, get down. I told people to get down. Um, and then as I'm just pointing people and telling people, like, you know, get down. It's just it's safe measures. Um, and people were listening. And, and then I seen... Um, okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on. Get to the good stuff. Like about how it's a woman that Ronald was defending Reagan. him. That nearly ended with Ronald Reagan's death and ended with the severe wounding of his press aide, Jim Brady. It is an insane, insane incident. It's total. I mean, again, it's 
disturbing at every possible level it is possible to be disturbed. Selena Zito is a columnist who's written extensively about President Trump. She was a few feet from the president when this happened. She describes the situation. She says, I was four feet from the stage in a causeway with about five other journalists. My daughter, a photographer, was next to me. Her husband was next to her. Trump started speaking. Six minutes later, we heard the noise. Pop, pop, pop. Some people in the crowd might have thought they heard fireworks. I knew exactly what it was. I own a gun. I looked up at the president. He touched his ear. I was shocked to see blood on his face, a smear of red across his cheek. Suddenly, he was surrounded. Everyone went down. My daughter hit the ground. My son-in-law lay on top of her. I threw my body next to theirs. Immediately, a security officer on. You got timed out because you're derailing <laughs> in the midst of a presidential uh, attempted assassination. You're derailing, and it's uh, among many other people who have also derailed all day. So you used a keyword that caused you to get auto-modded. On top of me. Are you okay? Are you okay? He asked. Three more shots. Pop, pop, pop. I've since seen videos of what happened. People were screaming, but all I remember hearing. Uh, I think this has stuff you didn't cover with the shooter. No, we, we did. We covered, we covered his background. The small, quiet, little nerd. Wore a mask. Uh, even passed like mask mandates. Um, they, they basically... I would almost put money on the fact that I probably had seen him wear a Trump shirt or something along the lines of that beforehand, which is so shocking to me. Uh, up to graph also says she was pretty sure that crooks himself or one of his friends wore a pro Trump shirt. I mean, he was like, he was, um, he was, uh, uh, what do you call it? He would always wear like a uh, hunting camo and stuff. Apparently try to join his school's, um, his join, <laughs> join his school shooting club, school shooting club, weird thing that Americans have. Anyway, up the graph says she believes Crooks was transferred to the Bethel School Park, uh, Park District in eighth grade, and that was he was a part of a class that received special instruction and often caused trouble for their teacher because of the material they looked up on the internet. They would have had videos of video games that were a little too graphic, a little too gory. Looking up, rifle club, not shooting club. Sorry, not a not a school shooting club, school rifle club. Political violence. They will find a way, and that last point is the big point here. We have seen an increase in political violence in this country over the course of the last five years, truly touching off with the riots of 2020. There were obviously riots in 2014. That were Sigga Foos did not recall Krugs making political overtures in class, but rather, this is from the Philadelphia Inquirer, uh, but rather someone as interested in how government works and not trying to insert his own beliefs into it. Another former classmate did not share his view. Max R. Smith recalled taking an American history course with Crooks as a sophomore. He did recall Crooks making political statements, but they shed no light on his actions Saturday. He definitely was conservative, he said. He makes me wonder how, why he would carry out an assassination attempt on a conservative candidate. Smith recalled a mock debate in which their professor history posed the government policy questions and asked students to stand on one side of the classroom or the other to signal their support or opposition for a proposal. The majority of the class were on the liberal side, but Tom, no matter what, always stood his ground on the conservative side, Smith said. That's still the picture I have of him, just standing alone on one side while the rest of the class was on the other. I mean, dude, he's literally wearing, like, Mount Rushmore superimposed over an American flag on his T-shirt, like, on his T-shirt in his goddamn school photo. Like, he chose to wear this shirt. This is my first time watching the stream. What are your thoughts on showing pictures of people that commit crimes like this on the news? I mean, this is a... This will be in history books, brother. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not, like... A guy who wanted to make a name for himself by like shooting up a school. This is a dude who tried to kill the former president currently running for president again. It's like, it's a little bit different, you know? Don't you think? We should probably not glorify this dude. I don't think we're glorifying this dude as is that we are trying to understand his motives at a time when hella people are just lying about his background. Yeah, <laughs> it's like... It's like saying we shouldn't we shouldn't talk about John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> Stop platforming John Wilkes Booth, please. What if there are what if there are copycats? Anyway, kid couldn't hit the side of a barn. He has no glory, Lamont. I, I mean, he missed, but like that's a hard shot, man. People are shooting at him. Like, I'm not defending this dude. I don't think he would have been a fan of mine if he knew who the guy was. You think there's a you think when his Twitch username gets leaked, there's a chance he follows you? Absolutely. 100%. Do you know how many Nazis follow me, dude? Does that, do you think that's because I myself have similar opinions to them? Or do you think they stalk my entire life because they love sending me the most personalized death threats they possibly could? But yes, if he was as online as, a, uh, as to have a Twitch account and followed me, I would not be shocked by that at all.
I have a shit ton of far right active hater stalkers. Anyway, yeah, he's got to be the most curious guy here. Just curious. Why did you say that every American deserved to be murdered on 9-11 and that multiple 9-11s should happen? Just curious. He's a just curious Andy in the chat if he's here. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know his ass is just curious all the time. Anyway. Or winked and nodded at by federal law enforcement. 2020 was the culmination of that. We saw political violence at the congressional baseball shooting. We've seen political violence in the attempted assassination of Brett Kavanaugh. This is a dark era. We are re-entering an era in which political assassination is considered part of the normal life of the nation if what happened yesterday does not stop. Here is CBS speaking to ER physician, Dr. Jim Sweetland, who tried to save the man who was murdered. You can see that his, his shirt is still stained with blood. I heard the shot. Okay, we've, uh, okay, this coverage is like covering everything. I wanna hear like all those other, I wanna hear his actual takes. She says, here's overhead man. Oh, here, man he's yourself. getting the Secret Service. Well There's a GoFundMe for the families of the people who were killed and wounded in Pennsylvania. I highly recommend you go check it out. We'll drop a link on YouTube. We'll drop a link wherever we can, obviously, in terms of social media in order to raise money for the families. So what exactly was Secret Service doing? Because if you see video? an overhead map of the area, there is a building that is extremely close. We're talking like 150 meters, maybe. Very, very close to the actual stage where President Trump was shot. How in the world did Secret Service not catch this? There are two questions. One is, why didn't they react faster when they saw the shooter? Because it turns out there were a lot of people who saw the shooter. Number two, three letters, D E I. It was, why didn't they know that the shooter was up on the roof? The first, uh, the first question is easier to answer. Susan Crabtree over at Real Clear Politics. She says, here's my reporting on why the Secret Service did not shoot until after the shooter engaged and some context about the House Republican investigation already underway into whether the agency's DEI policies are affecting its readiness. The blowback against the Secret Service started within the hour of the assassination attempt and continued even after Trump and others credited the agency with saving Trump's life by quickly killing a shooter crawling across a nearby rooftop. But a source within the Secret Service community tells Real Clear Politics the agency rules of engagement in the situation are to wait until the president is fired upon to return fire. You wanna take a shot then find out the guy was holding a telescope, the source suggested? The Secret Service is by nature reactive and you better be right when you do react or you're effed. So first of all, that protocol should probably change. If you are foolish enough to go up top of a roof and bring a telescope, then Secret Service has to do its job. It has to take preventative measures. The Secret Service protocol requires a counter sniper aware of a potential shooter to radio directly to Intel division team to respond and investigate. In this case, the investigation may have been cut short by the shooter firing his weapon. So the counter sniper then fired as quickly as possible in return. The source praised the counter sniper who acquired the target and responded within three seconds, calling their performance incredible. The counter. <laughs> I like, I love this. Ben Shapiro's like, shoot everyone on sight. What does he think? Who does he think is going to get killed at a Trump rally if they are, I don't know, carrying a telescope? Does he think people that don't have a gun on them at the Trump rally that simply have like cameras on them or a telescope are going to be somehow secret Democrats? He's just advocate. I mean, sure, dude. I think so, too. You're right. Everyone should be murked. <laughs> snipers are highly trained and extremely accurate. However, that is the answer as to why the shots went off first. The real question is, why in the world was this person on the roof of an adjacent building with a rifle? So here is video that has emerged of Trump rally goers shouting that they see the shooter moments before the shooting. You get, so you can hear it right there. People shouting he's got a gun before the first shots are fired. TMZ has actual footage of the, the attempted assassination. How did he get on top of the building? It's just unbelievable that this was, that this was even a possibility. Again, an overhead map shows law enforcement snipers on the roof of a nearby building behind the stage where Trump was speaking. The shooter was on the only other nearby building, which is extremely, extremely close to where President Trump was speaking. How was he allowed up there? There are a lot of people who are engaged in a lot of theorizing today, but that is the fundamental question. The fundamental question is, how is it that this person was able to climb onto the roof with a long gun? How was that possible? How is that possible? Speaker Mike Johnson has already announced a full-scale investigation. He says the House will conduct a full investigation of the tragic events today. The American people deserve to know the truth. We'll have Secret Service Director 
Kimberly Cheadle and other appropriate officials from DHS and the FBI appear for a hearing before our committee's AC. Do we know how he got the gun? Yes, of course. It's Western Pennsylvania. His father legally obtained the firearm from a gun shop, one of many in the area. Yep. This was only exacerbated by footage of some of the agents afterwards. So as you could even see in the original footage of the attempted assassination of President Trump, many of the people who are attempting to jump on him and cover him are people who are shorter and smaller than President Trump, which is a disaster area. I, mean, I travel with private security. I am not President Trump. I get some threats. I am not President Trump. My security, they are bigger and stronger than I am. That's why they're security. If you can't shield President Trump with your body, what are you even doing in this job? This particular video has gone viral as well it should. It is video of President Trump. Well, to be fair, Donald Trump is 6'3". You're a manlet. You're 5'4". So it's not that hard to find people that are larger than you. Many women could very adequately shield you with their bodies. Okay? Um, also, on Secret Service security detail across the board, the not every single person is larger than the, the actual person that they're covering. Just so you guys understand. That's not how that works. There are spotters as well. They are throwing bodies at the problem, if you will. There are plenty of people that are on his Secret Service detail that are going to be shorter than him. Those guys have a different position. Anyway. Climbing into his travel vehicle here. And as you'll see, there are two Secret Service agents standing by the car. Both of them are female. Both of them do not look like they are in particularly good shape. One of them is fumbling around to reholster her weapon as though she doesn't know how to reholster a weapon. It looks like something out of Reno 911. It's pathetic. Here is some of the footage. Secret Service is letting his head like present significantly above the crowd there. So, and those are the men leading him. So it's not like the women are responsible. Like he's the one who got up and was like, oh yeah. Well, perhaps one of the explanations for how you end up with Secret Service agents who don't know how to reholster a weapon is the fact that they have been actively attempting to DEI the entire secret. Yes, he said it. He said it. Yo, these dumbass broads in Secret Service. Yes. That's my shit, dude. That's my shit. Let's go. Let's go. DEI Secret Service. They're all gay. They're all women. They're putting lesbian women in Secret Service. It's fucked up. Men only. Sexy men. Broad shoulders. Big dicks. Going forward. Do you understand me? Secret service. And it turns out when you lower standards in order to achieve particular quotas, the quality goes down. There's a dude, dude, conservatives are so awesome on their messaging discipline. When they hammer in on a narrative, like when they laser focus on a narrative, their conviction is so sharp. It could be anything. Like if DEI was the prevailing narrative in like World War II, they would be like, Hitler's doing DEI. Japan is doing DEI. That's why we had to do Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's like, it reminds me of that time. It reminds me of that time when, <laughs> when abortion was being talked about, right? It was the issue of debate. It was up. Uh, people were claiming that, you know, abortion is murder, as one does, as you guys know, right? And dumbass Marjorie Taylor Greene, dumbass Marjorie Taylor Greene said cancel culture when talking about murder. She said, Abortion is like cancel culture for a baby, okay? It's like she was so lasered in on using cancel culture as a substitute for every word that she said, you're canceling, Democrats are canceling the baby. Cancel culture, a crime worse than murder. Damn shock. This is Secret Service head Kimberly Cheadle explaining to CBS News, not all that long ago, that her goal was a 30% Secret Service agency. Your goal should be protecting people like President Trump. You don't have that many of them. But I'm very conscious uh, as, uh, as I sit in this chair now of making sure that we need to uh, attract. Does Ben think JFK was assassinated because of women in Secret Service too? Yes. Yes. YouTuber DEI now, I know, it's crazy. Candidates Michelle Carey sure was defending the president. <laughs> that we are developing and giving opportunities to everybody in our workforce, um, and particularly women.
I'm sorry, that is not the goal of the Secret Service. And once again, the peculiar oddity of diversity, equity, and inclusion in which it matters. I love taking these sorts of statements seriously. Like, liberals do this for marketing, and it's still deeply unserious. They're not going to go for, like, just women. They're going to go for whoever's the most qualified, okay? And Republicans are on the other side of this argument where they also take it seriously, and they're like, no, they're going to only hire women, and that's bad. <laughs> Secret Service has had many f***-ups throughout time, okay? Like, much worse f***-ups, as a matter of fact, <laughs> including with JFK. And I don't think they were tasked with hiring as many women as possible in the way that Ben is, you know, in the way that Ben is presenting. Matters more who does the job than how well they do it has consequences. Just pathetic. Okay, so President Trump reacted to this. He issued a statement. And honestly, it's a beautiful statement. He said, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for their rapid response on the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person that was badly injured. It is incredible that such an act can take place in our country. Nothing is known at this time about the shooter who is now dead. He released this quite early. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong and that I heard a whizzing sound, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place. Okay, 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 come on, come on. And he's dead. And this country is forever changed in radical and insane ways. He said, yeah, it would have honestly, it would have been worse. Like, I feel like I feel like if it was if he had died, if he had died, if he got shot in the head and died, I think Republicans would have gone cra like crazier than they are going now. Like right now, they're simply posturing for revenge and there might be some attempts. But if they actually clapped him, dude, holy shit. Says, quote, we will fear not, but instead remain... It doesn't even matter if the dude was like, <laughs> I used to love Trump. I'm a diehard Republican, and that's why I killed him, because he's betrayed the cause or whatever. I'm not even... They wouldn't care. They would be just, like, relentlessly attacking anyone and everyone that they think is responsible. Resilience in our faith and defiance in the face of wickedness. Our love goes out to other victims and their families. We pray for the recovery of those who were wounded and hold in our hearts the memory of the citizen who was so horribly killed. In this moment, it is more. They said their goal was 30% in five years. Doesn't that imply some male candidates won't get the job despite more qualified because they feel the 30%? No, man, that's just simply a target that doesn't always get, that doesn't always mean that they're gonna fulfill that target, okay? It's marketing. It is marketing. You are implying in this hypothetical scenario that there are more qualified people. You are operating under the underlying assumption that like women are across the board incapable of uh, fulfilling this role. By the way, this role that like doesn't always have to be, you know, a body in front of the president because that's not all Secret Service does. As a matter of fact, for those of you who don't know, I don't know why Ben Shapiro's not talking about this. He's supposed to be this big nerd. Secret Service does isn't just tasked with protecting uh the president and the president's families, okay? Beyond beyond the immediate combat positions that you have, Secret Service also protects money. They are the ones who are actually uh uh going after counterfeiters. So when they're talking about uh when they're talking about like the Secret Service, they could be putting uh, these people in any number of different positions. Not every single person is a doorbuster in the Secret Service. Just like, hoorah, the most brawling dude you've, you've ever seen in your life. Okay? Important than ever that we stand united and show our true character as Americans, remaining strong and determined and not allowing evil to win. I truly love our country. I love you all. I look forward to speaking to our great nation this week from Wisconsin. It's a bit Why does the Secret Service need to do marketing as a government position? What do you mean? You think the government doesn't do DEI initiatives for the same exact reasons that like a company does? Everything is marketing. It's to say that they are quote unquote woke. That's it. I don't think you understand. Every part of the government and every company still ultimately needs to, you know, fill their ranks. And they try different mechanisms, different methods to be able to fill those ranks. They think representation politics works in that regard. Again, a beautiful statement from President Trump in response to all of yeah, this. Have you, have you seen the way the military markets? Have you seen a military ad before? The military is the government. Why the fuck are they doing marketing? They spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year on that alone. The first major Democratic politician to respond was not the sitting president of the United States.
The first major politician to respond was Barack Obama, who issued a statement to media, I quote, there is absolutely no place for political violence in our democracy. Although we don't know yet exactly what happened, we should all be relieved that former president. Yeah, uh, Joe Biden is going to be speaking in the next eight minutes, by the way. Trump wasn't seriously hurt and use this moment to recommit ourselves to civility and respect in our politics. Michelle and I are wishing him a quick recovery. Okay, then President Biden finally made a public statement. He came out, he said it was sick, but he still refused to label it an assassination attempt after it was completely obvious. Remember, he didn't speak until about 8.15 last night, which is past his bedtime, apparently. This is two hours after the attempted shooting. Everyone knew by this point that there was an assassination attempt. It was on video. Yeah, he's like, mm, he didn't say it was an assassination attempt. Hmm. I didn't like the way he said, we have to do a call for unity. Hmm. This makes me very angry. Hmm. The blood was evident on President Trump's face. And here was Joe Biden saying, well, we just, we don't know. We don't know. And then he suggests we have to unify. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like... It's like, dude, dude, listen. Donald Trump getting grazed in the ear in an attempted assassination doesn't magically put up a shield, okay? And it doesn't magically put up a shield for him in the eyes of the broader public either. There are still going to be plenty of people, myself included, who despise him, okay? who despises politics, who despises worldview, who are still going to be honest and open about their, you know, genuine resentment for such a thing, for such a person, okay? I think it's ridiculous that these Republicans who only traffic in unimaginably violent narratives have the gall, the audacity, the indecency to just, like, sit there and be like, ah, you better not criticize my president. He got shot at. Like, get the f*** out of here. Suck my dick, okay? Especially when, like, assassination attempts or genuine violence occurs against democratic elected representatives, you know, uh, or entire populations of people in forms of like mass shootings and whatever. And Republicans immediately rush to either neutralize it by claiming that it was actually a lone wolf that was irrelevant. It was just some random crazy guy, even though the random crazy guy literally wrote a manifesto about why he's doing it or uh, or even when, like, Nancy Pelosi's husband was hammered in the brain by David DePeepe, they make jokes about it in instantly. Like, they, jokes, they make jokes about it instantly. So the idea that, like, these guys uh, have any leg to stand on in this regard is so stupid. Okay? Donald Trump himself loved the Paul Pelosi situation. He joked about it. Donald Trump Jr. posted a photo of underwear and a hammer being like i'm doing a paul pelosi cosplay this halloween like come on you did the same thing exactly i do but the difference is i am not the one being like wow it's time for it's time for everybody to dial it back like <laughs> the f yes i did doesn't that literally show you that i'm equal opportunity on that regard like i'm saying i made fun of the paul pelosi situation because it was funny I made fun of the dumbasses who claimed that this guy was like actually uh, not some right wing loser, but instead was like a gay uh, lover of Paul Pelosi. Yeah, David the Pee Pee. <laughs> yeah, the attempt to twist the Paul Pelosi attack into a broader story about supposed extremism in the Republican rhetoric. So vote Dem is so transparent, so transparently opportunistic and pathetic. Everyone can see what you're doing, Democrats in the media. It's disgusting. Yes, they should instead keep saying Paul Pelosi was having gay sex with the QAnon Republican guy who wanted to kill Nancy Pelosi. Look at, the, look at Ben Shapiro. Look at Ben Shapiro. Back then. I'm going to retweet this for no reason. That was in 2022, man. Ah. <sighs> like this we cannot condone this mr president do you think this was an assassination attempt i don't know enough to i i have I have, an, I have an opinion but i don't have any facts so i want to make sure we have all the facts before i make some comment anymore. to be fair at this point um i think only the fbi had or not the fbi local law enforcement had uh there was only one news report about local law enforcement looking at this as a possible attempted assassination now you could say that's ridiculous and i agree but it is reasonable for the president to say this 
Uh, I wish he would exercise his level of caution when he's lying about, you know, beheaded babies that he saw. You know what I mean? Remember when he lied about how beheaded babies, he saw footage of beheaded babies? Wish he would, wish he would not have done that and demonstrated a little bit of restraint there, don't you think? Just saying. More comments. Thank you. Just tepid and pathetic. Tepid and pathetic. If this had been an assassination attempt against a Democrat, you know, you know that this would be a completely different statement by President Biden. And the reason it would be a completely different statement by President Biden is because one of the great lies that the left has told over the course of my lifetime is that heated political rhetoric is only a feature of the right. The left can say whatever the hell they want about any Republican, particularly President Trump. They can say it over and over. They can shout it from the rooftops. They can run entire political campaigns based on it and then declare that they are not answerable to reality. Hearing President Biden call for unity in this moment after this, of course, he should. He should have all along. Instead, he has run a political campaign for re-election on the basis that Donald Trump is Hitler. If you keep saying your opponent is Hitler, somebody might take you seriously. As a Dude, this is so funny. He's literally doing words or violence, dude. Like, yeah, what are you supposed to do, dude? Yeah, you can't criticize the president. You can't say that, like, his overtly Hitlerian politics. You cannot say that his overtly Hitlerian politics are Hitlerian. You can't do that. Woke scold, dude. Everyone's a goddamn liberal, okay? Everyone is a goddamn liberal. Republican congressional candidate called Obama a secret terrorist supporting Muslim. Well, to be fair, at least he said secret terrorist supporting Muslim and not, you know, an open terrorist supporting Muslim. <laughs> Think about that. He could have said that. That's called restraint, sweetie. Look it up in a book. Anyway. It turns out. Here is Joe Biden. This is his speech at 2022 in Independence Hall. I said this is one of the most dangerous and fascistic political speeches I ever heard. It was Independence Hall, 2022, flanked by members of the military in the background against a blood-red Independence Hall. Here was Joe Biden. Again, this is in the lead-up to the midterm. Oh, dude, this is the speech. Oh my God, he's bringing back a deep cut. The, the speech behind the red banner. Oh, this is my favorite. Yo, this is literally my favorite. All right, uh, Dark Brandon is live. We're going to move on to Dark Brandon, uh, where he will be saying some really scary things, okay?